Hello and welcome to the Cleveland County 4-H Volunteer Presentation. I'm your host Jessica Angel, the Family and Consumer Science Agent for Cleveland County. Let's get started. First off, I would like to thank you for volunteering to share your time and talents as a 4-H project leader. For this session, you will be able to define the basics of 4-H, understand the 4-H philosophy, implement the 4-H system, and be an advocate for 4-H. Serving over 14,000 youth in all 75 counties in the state of Arkansas, 4-H youth development programs span topics from agriculture to zoology and everything in between. Stressing hands-on learning, youth learn to communicate, lead, and serve their communities in new and innovative ways. 4-H delivers these quality programs through a variety of ways, including community clubs, project and special interest clubs, in-school clubs, school enrichment programs, and after-school programming. These activities can only happen with the support from you as a volunteer. Volunteers are always valued in 4-H. There are many reasons to become a volunteer. Some people want to become involved in their children's activities. Others want to help children in their community or have a skill to share. And others were 4-Hers as children and want to share their experiences. As a 4-H volunteer, you have the opportunity to not only witness others grow in talent, but see yourself evolve as a leader. You will also be rewarded in many other ways, including developing knowledge and skills in the areas of child and youth development, organizational planning, and personal and group management. You get the opportunity to watch the development of 4-H members turn into leaders. You as a volunteer will know you have given help to others and your own family. Becoming a volunteer lets you meet new people, and work with outstanding 4-H members and adults. Volunteers are the only way that 4-H can reach youth throughout the state. Our 4-H volunteers bring a diverse set of skills to our youth that one person alone cannot bring. Your talent and skills contribute to a rounded 4-H learning experience for all members. To be a volunteer in Arkansas 4-H involves the following. Registering online, criminal background check, and the cost for that is $11. You must complete the child maltreatment check, or what we call e 164, orientation to 4-H training, risk management and youth protection training, mandated reporter training, and trainings that we may have here at the Extension Office. Trainings are also available online at visiting www.uax.edu. The mission of the 4-H Youth Development Program is to help children, youth, and families realize their full potential and to improve the quality of life for Arkansas children, youth, and families. The 4-H Youth Development Program provides opportunities for youth to acquire knowledge, develop skills, form attitudes, and practice behavior that will enable them to become self-directing, productive, and contributing members of society. The 4-H year is based on the calendar year and runs from January 1st to December 31st. The phrase, learning by doing, sums up the educational philosophy of the 4-H program. Youth learn best when they are involved in their educational experiences. The 4-H emblem is a four-leaf clover with the letter H on each leaf. The letters in the emblem stand for head, heart, hands, and health, the foundation of all 4-H programs. Here at the Extension Office, we grant authorization for the use of the 4-H name and emblem at the local level through a yearly charter that we'll discuss in later slides. Life skills are a basic foundation that prepares you for success in life. The goal is for you to possess the necessary life skills to succeed and lead a productive life. We use our head to think, to plan, and to reason like record keeping, goal setting, problem solving, and decision making. We use our heart to be kind, true, and sympathetic towards one another by feeling, caring, sportsmanship, and responsibility. We use our hands to be useful, helpful, and skillful by working or doing community service, giving, and teamwork. And our health is considered as to resist disease, enjoy life, and to make for efficiency by personal safety, self-esteem, character, and responsibility. 
The motto, to make the best better, is intended to inspire young people to continue to learn and grow, but also to make their best efforts better through participating in educational experiences. The 4-H colors are green and white. Green stands for nature's most common color. It symbolizes springtime, life, and youth. The color white symbolizes purity and high ideals. Four H grew out of the progressive educational movement of the late 1800s and early 1900s in America. Rural school principals and superintendents were interested in applying practical concepts to reading, writing, and arithmetic lessons as a way to teach rural youth who knew little about the urban setting where much of the material that they were studying was set in. At the same time, agriculture colleges and experiment stations were accumulating a body of scientific knowledge that would improve the farmer's productivity and living standards. Unfortunately, farmers showed little interest in adopting this so-called book farming methods of the college professors. These professors began to consider the possibilities of indirectly reaching farmers through teaching their children improved agriculture methods. From an early, unorganized beginning, 4-H clubs have developed into a worldwide youth movement. 4-H has resulted from the ideas and work of many pioneer leaders, with some 29 different individuals being credited as the founder of the 4-H program. 4-H youth development in Arkansas is more than just a 100-year-old tradition. A timeline is found on the left, starting in 1908 to 1938. Arkansas joined a movement to teach rural youngsters the skills they would need to manage a farm and home. Corn and canning clubs sprang up in Arkansas counties. In 1939 to 1958, during World War II, at the time that followed, 4-H continued to grow and prosper. Winners of state-level contests were rewarded with regional and national trips. Due to the large numbers of youth joining in 4-H, the three-tiered age system that is still applied today was implemented. In 1959 to 1978, America entered decades marked by protest over civil rights and war. 4-H continued to offer stability and growth, expanding its programs to urban youth. In 1979 to present day, 4-H moves beyond the home and farm by adding programs essential to life and business, such as communications, leadership, career development, and technology, while still maintaining its agricultural roots. There are multiple types of clubs, the first being a community club, which focuses on multiple projects and involves members of a variety of ages and interests. Community clubs normally have monthly general club meetings that can include icebreakers, team building activities, club business, and educational programs. In addition to the general club meetings, members will participate in separate project meetings with different volunteer project leaders. The project club centers around a specific 4-H project. For example, the club could choose food and nutrition, which falls under the category healthy living. However, all members must participate. Members may work on the first, second, third, or fourth year phase of the project. Clubs usually meet once a month on a yearly schedule. This type of club may not meet the interest of all girls and boys in the community, and participation is limited unless other one project clubs are organized. The in-school clubs meet during school hours, but have officers and planned activities beyond school enrichment. These clubs operate much of the same as community clubs, but a teacher may serve in the role of a club leader. In-school clubs provide the opportunity to reach more of the county's potential audience, to build a relationship with the county school system, and demonstrate how 4-H can add to current academic learning. After school clubs are educational programs offered to youth outside of school hours that are usually in a school or community center and incorporate 4-H curriculum. These are typically utilized with child care facilities. And last, we have the SPIN club or special interest club. This is a club that includes subject matter training programs typically directed by extension prof professionals as a one time or short series of meetings. We don't have a lot of these across the state, but they are definitely something that we could look into if interest is shown. As a 4-H volunteer, it is important to recognize that youth are developmentally different at various ages. You cannot expect an 8-year-old to fully complete the same task as an 18-year-old because they are not physically, socially, intellectually, and emotionally at the same level. Each child will develop at their own pace, but collectively, they may share some characteristics that make working with them easier. 
if you understand both their similarities and differences. In the Cloverbud stage, Cloverbuds base thinking on reality and concrete concepts. They do not think in abstract terms. They only work well on one task at a time. They are interested in the process of a task rather than the end result. They are learning to master physical skills using large muscle groups. In the junior age division, they have lots of energy. They cannot sit still for long periods of time. Active learning is encouraged for this age division. As a leader, encourage peer group projects rather than individual projects. Hobbies and collections are important at this age. Service learning is important to this age as well. In the senior age division, career exploration is important. They like to show what they know and have learned and emphasize personal development and leadership and let them plan their own programs and hold them accountable for success and failure of their plans. 4-H Youth Development Education programs are created and conducted principally for youth in grades kindergarten through 12th grade. In Arkansas, there are three age levels in which youth can participate in the 4-H program. Ages 5 through 8 are clover buds. Become, this is where they become official participants on their fifth birthday. The Clover Bud program is a non-competitive, fun, informal educational program designed to acquaint youth with 4-H. There are no competitive evaluations of a child's exhibit or project. The junior age division consists of ages 9 through 13. They are eligible to participate in district and some state competitive activities. And senior ages are 14 through 19, and they may participate and or compete in 4-H activities and events until December 31st of the year that they celebrate their 19th birthday. Senior members enjoy leadership opportunities that allow them to exercise their developing skills in adult roles. All clubs require to have the following forms on file. The AFAC 662, this is the official request to have a 4-H unit, certification of non-discrimination, and permission to use the 4-H name and emblem. This needs to be completed and updated yearly. The club charter application details leaders, officers, meeting time, and place. This must be completed and updated yearly. The bylaws provide the rules governing the operation of each club. This must be completed and updated as amended. Next couple of slides, we're going to look over some important forms so you can be familiar with them. Here you see the annual request for official approval of the 4-H unit, certification of non-discrimination and permission to use the 4-H name and emblem. This allows for the legal use of the 4-H clover. We'll be able to guide and assist you here at the Extension Office. This is the annual report on club officers, meeting times, and leaders. Again, we'll be able to guide and assist you here at the Extension Office. Every club must have some sort of bylaws. These are located in the officer's manual. Again, continued of bylaws, the club president, the club secretary, the date that these were adopted, and the club adult leader will need to sign off on this. Let's take a look at 4-H club organizational leadership. A club has at least one adult volunteer leader who serves as the organizational leader. Members plan the club programs. Officers are elected to give youth leadership responsibilities. The club has participating representatives on the, on the county 4-H council if available. Club membership should consist of at least six members from a minimum of two unrelated families. The club has at least one meeting per month for at least six months. Every member should have a part on the program at least twice during the year. Hold one or more meetings at which parents are specifically invited to attend. Have a 4-H club recognition dinner, banquet, or special program during the year. Keep a record of the club's meeting and activities. This is located in the secretary's book C-402. Report each meeting and attendance. This should be filed with the county extension office. Each member is enrolled in at least one 4-H project. The club has some representatives participating in county 4-H contests. This could be a Rama, district, state, and even nationals. The club will hold three or more project theme meetings and conduct or participate in community improvement or a community service project.
Keeping a 4-H meeting exciting and fun is critical to keep clubs active and engaged. Any well-balanced 4-H meeting will include an educational program, business, and recreational activity that engages the youth. Members should be involved in planning of club meetings, keeping balance of activities consistent with the following plan. Group building should be between 15 to 20 minutes. This can include fun activities to add enthusiasm and enjoyment to the meeting. This may consist of fellowship or informal time to get to know each other. Icebreakers and team building activities with intentional outcomes. Recreation including organized games, refreshments providing time to socialize with peers and celebration where members showcase their accomplishments. In group decisions, expect 15 to 20 minutes. This is where the club demonstrates democracy and action through a structured business meeting where youth learn to listen to views of others, come to decisions, and learn about parliamentary procedure. The important thing is to keep to an agenda. In group learning, allow a time of 45 to 60 minutes. This is where the learning by doing is put in place. Using a variety of activities, youth can build their confidence in their projects, self-esteem, and build their decision-making skills. Examples of learned activities include community service activities, tours, guest speakers and presentations, special programs, project work, and demonstration and talks. A good 4-H club cannot function without elective officers. A great officer team will work to ensure the club's activities and projects are successful for their fellow members and the community at large. As leaders in the 4-H club, each officer has a responsibility to the group, in addition to the specific roles associated with his or her office. The number of officers for each club will vary, but the officer roles typically consist of a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, reporter, photographer, song leader, and recreation leader. Each officer's duty is outlined in the 4-H Club Officer's Manual, C-408, which can be assessed by visiting www.uax.edu. Also, we have created a presentation on our YouTube channel for all club officers to review. Volunteers are those special persons who do work on behalf of the 4-H program at the county level without paid compensation for their help. Direct volunteers are those adults that work closely with the youth. They may have direct contact with the youth at club meetings, county activities, and events. Indirect volunteers handle the behind-the-scenes work that is critical to supporting a 4-H program. These volunteers aid in judging, fundraising, serving on advisory committees, or the donating of money and supplies. Both types of volunteers are critical to keeping a 4-H program functioning the best way that it can. Let's talk about, on the next slides, the volunteer leaders and responsibilities. Here is our jobs and responsibilities for leaders. Please take a few moments to review this material. If you have any further questions, please contact us here at the Extension Office. As a volunteer, you also have a responsibility to us here at the Extension Office. You will turn in regular 4-H club reports and member enrollment information. You will keep us informed of club activities, support countywide activities, be flexible, attend leader training meetings, make requests for information materials well in advance of the program, show fairness during competition between 4-H members and other clubs 4-H members, avoid creating jealousy and unnecessary competition between 4-H clubs and members, and let us know your needs for training. Federal and state legislations provide some protection for volunteers of nonprofit organizations and government agencies. Arkansas Volunteer Immunity Act of 1987 covers volunteers of government agencies like the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture's Cooperative Extension Service. Under Arkansas Code 21-13-108, individuals who volunteer for service to a state agency, department, institution, or division are entitled to the protection of the state agency's sovereign immunity to the same extent as paid staff. This means that state volunteers are immune from liability and from being sued for acts occurring with the scope of their volunteer service, except for malicious acts or omission or acts to the extent that they may be covered by liability insurance. Volunteers may be held responsible for damage or injury if they act outside the scope of the 4-H program. If a volunteer is covered by an automobile liability insurance, the volunteer's liability for negligent acts 
is limited to the amount of coverage. Training opportunities are provided for volunteers to allow for further development skills to provide positive youth development opportunities. These opportunities include volunteer training forms at the state, regional, and national levels, national online training workshops, county and local meetings coordinated by agents, state level online opportunities. Arkansas 4-H requires that all volunteers participate in three initial trainings to be a direct volunteer with our youth. This includes the mandated reporter training, 4-H orientation and risk management with 4-H youth or chaperone training prior to 2019. Additional training is encouraged to keep volunteers current on trends in youth development, club management practices, and project related training. As your county extension agent, I'll advise and keep you up to date on trainings that are available and needed. Parents are vital to a successful 4-H club. They share in the work and success of the club. Much of what our youth gain from 4-H depends on the attitude and involvement of their parents. When interested parents participate in 4-H, the members benefit from their support and encouragement. When the parents know about 4-H and the activities and events available to the members, they can help their children participate. Informed parents can help members attend club meetings, workshops, keep records, prepare for competition, and prepare for leadership roles in the club program. A way to keep other parents involved is to keep them informed. Here are some examples you as a leader can discuss with other parents. What is 4-H and the opportunities it offers? The financial cost to parents and members? The time, place, and topic of the 4-H meetings? Maybe look to see what space is available, like a kitchen, yard, or even a garage. You can help provide refreshments for the meeting. How can parents encourage their youth to start and complete their projects? How to encourage their youth to participate in competitions, events, and special projects? And encourage to youth to attend all meetings. Working with parents and 4-H leaders, youth are encouraged to choose a project or projects and build their knowledge of a specific subject area. 4-H youth complete activities related to that project area. They keep records of their activities, give written and oral demonstrations about their projects, and participate in judging and other contests involving their project. Project work not only increases a 4-H'er's knowledge of a particular subject of interest to them, but project work can also prepare them for a career in that field. In Arkansas 4-H, our projects are divided into three major focus areas, STEM education, citizenship and leadership skills, and healthy living. Projects are further divided into initiative areas where projects are categorized by what skills the youth is learning through their work. A 4-H project helps 4-H members grow, helps them develop life skills, it helps 4-Hers make wise decisions, it helps the youth learn responsibility, it helps them learn to work with others. Project work encourages youth to set and reach goals and project work teaches them scientific methods. Forage promotes youth learning by doing and utilizes a methodology called experimental learning, which engages learners in an activity that is direct and hands-on. It uses open-ended questions that invite further discussion and interaction. It allows participants to discuss the experiences they had doing the activity. It results in active reflection and discussion of the activity by the participants. It makes connections between the activity and real-world examples and applies the outcomes of the activity to one or more independent situations. The essential elements of 4-H development are basic principles upon which the 4-H youth development program operates. Incorporating these elements enables the 4-H program to focus on positive outcomes desired for youth. All youth need belonging, which can be defined as to know that they are cared about by others in an inclusive and safe environment. Mastery can be defined as to feel and believe that they are capable and successful. Independence can be known as that they are able to influence people and events. And generosity is which they can be defined as to practice helping others through their own generosity. The most widely used model of experimental learning in the 4-H development program utilizes the following five-step cycle. Experience. Do it. Begin with a concrete experience. 
This can be an individual activity or group activity, but it involves something with little or no help from the leader. Ask youth to rate an item. For instance, which product costs more? Additionally, you can create exhibits, role play, give a demonstration, problem solve, or play a game. Share. What happened? Get the group or the individual to talk about the experience. Share reactions and observations in the group. Answer the questions. What did you do? What did you see? Feel? Hear? Taste? What was the most difficult part of the experience? The easiest part? Let the group talk freely. Process. What's important? Discuss, analyze, reflect on, and look at the experience. You should talk about how themes, problems, and issues are brought out by the experience and how they were addressed. Discuss how questions are created by the activity. Ask more questions. Analyze the experience. Generalize. So what? Support youth in finding trends or common lessons in the experience that can be applied to the real world, not just the specific topic. Identify key terms on real life principles that capture the meaning. Apply. Now what? Talk about how the new information can be applied to everyday life now or sometime in the future. Apply what was learned to a similar or different situation. Practice what was learned. Providing a hands-on learning experience alone does not create experimental learning. The experience itself comes first. The learning comes from the thoughts and ideas created in sharing, processing, generalizing, and applying the experience. The easiest way to remember this model is to do, reflect, apply. Life skills are a basic foundation that prepares young people for success in life. The goal is for every young person to possess the necessary life skills to succeed and lead to a productive life. Citizenship is defined in broad terms. It is more than voting and understanding how government works. Citizenship incorporates concepts of youth and governance, civic engagement, and uses strategies such as service learning and community service to foster young people's sense of connection to communities. Our citizenship activities can and should foster the development of generosity as described above. They may also help develop important life skills, inspire an appreciation for the history and heritage of one's family, community, state, and nation, help develop knowledge of the principles, processes, and structures of government, develop awareness and understanding of environmental, social, or other issues, and encourage understanding of how societal issues impact oneself and others. Let's discuss leadership. We believe that all youth have the potential to become leaders and that there are multiple ways to be an effective leader. Leadership can be defined as the ability to influence and support others in a positive manner for a common goal. It is critical that youth hold the primary leadership roles throughout the 4-H program. 4-H creates opportunities not just to learn about leadership, but to practice it as well. Participating youth should have opportunities for goal setting, program planning, problem solving, team building, and decision making. You should be adequately prepared for those roles and should have opportunities to reflect on their leadership experiences in ways that will enhance their learning. We believe that youth are not only the leaders of tomorrow, they are also the leaders of today. Leadership opportunities for youth exist at the local, county, state, and national levels and provide increasingly challenging and responsible roles for young leaders. Leadership development can begin as soon as a club or other group forms so that youth can learn how to become effective officers develop skills that prepare them for future roles, make decisions at the local, county, state, and national le levels. As they progress, they will find many opportunities to provide leadership. The success or failure of any organization depends largely on the program. The more care and thought put into the program, the greater the probability of a successful 4-H club. The important aspect of any 4-H club meeting is to provide a balance of fun business and learning as depicted in the club wheel at the right time. If you find yourself unbalanced, your club will not roll along smoothly and members will not want to return. When you are planning your club's activities, remember to provide a significant role for each member, meet needs of all group members, share responsibilities among members, ensure a balanced program, provide for better communication, provide opportunity to learn planning skills and avoid those calendar conflicts, which I know we all have busy schedules. Here are some tips and tricks for your meeting. Start and stop meetings on time. Communicate upcoming events, dates and responsibilities with members and parents. A club with about 10 to 15 members 
provides the best opportunity for good meetings, ensuring everybody has a role. Set behavior standards and hold true to them. Hold meetings in the evening or after school. However, some clubs might decide to meet during the day, and this is acceptable. Whatever works best for your club is key. Have a variety of activities, both during and apart from club meetings. Club officers and committees should function actively. Give the first year club member some responsibility. It helps them feel important. Also provide opportunities for members and leaders to help plan the program and activities. Another thing to consider is year round meeting dates because those are most desirable because there is no downtime. Let's talk about 4-H business by month. Make plans for a spring project tour, discuss suggestions for improving club meetings, make a list of prospective club members, report on progress of project work, plan for county and district 4-H Oramas, or discuss county 4-H activities and make plans to participate. These are just some examples. Here are some more examples of some program ideas for your club. Did you know March is Archaeology Month here in Arkansas? You can invite your local archaeologists to speak about the historic and prehistoric communities in your region. You can go green in celebration of St. Patty's Day by learning about ways to conserve energy and resources by inviting a guest speaker from a local energy cooperative or company. We always hope for the best on this one, but March is usually when we see storms. You could have a meteorologist or storm chaser come talk to the club and you could learn about storm safety. It's always good to be prepared. Another good program idea is to learn about volunteer opportunities in 4-H. You can have a member or adult leader talk with 4-H about summer camp opportunities, leadership programs, and local events. The possibilities are endless. You can get creative. We also have idea ideas in our leader training book as well. A successful 4-H meeting is the result of planning. Good meetings do not just happen, they are planned. The time and thought given to advanced preparation will result in better club meetings and increased participation and enthusiasm by a member. Here is a 4-H meeting checklist for you to go by. Do the officers and leaders check meeting plans beforehand? Does the president call the meeting to order on time, keep the meeting rolling, and close it on time? Do all officers use correct parliamentary procedure? Is the business part of the meeting short and snappy? Are guests introduced and made to feel at home? Is there a special program in addition to the business meeting and recreation? Does the meeting have a variety? Is the educational program of interest to everyone? Did everyone learn something? Is at least one demonstration given at each meeting? Is there singing or other musical involvement during the meeting? Is there an opportunity for members to get to know each other? Are all announcements short and to the point? Do officers avoid doing all the talking? Do leaders avoid doing all the talking? Do all or most of the members take part in the meeting? Is the recreation suitable to the meeting place and, and the group? Is there a common courtesy shown between officers and members? Are leaders given a chance to voice their opinions? Is there fun, learning, and fellowship at the meeting? These are all great meeting checklists for you to look at. If you have any questions about today's recording, please contact us at the Extension Office at 501-362-2524. We will be happy to assist you in any way possible. Again, we appreciate your time for reviewing our 4-H Leader presentation.